Hey everyone, welcome to Buzzing About Romance. I am Becky, and joining me for this episode is Leah. Hi, Leah. Hi, everybody. And Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Becky. Um, so happy Sunday, everybody. The weather where happy we were was beautiful today. It was it was really nice until about half an hour ago and it started storming. <sighs> so we're getting more rain. Leah has had the weather struggle bus this month. Yeah, I'm a little red. Oh, I had to yell. It was really nice up to then. I had to yell at my grown-up child today. To put on sunscreen? Yeah, he's sunburned. He's like, why didn't you remind me? I'm like, because every other day you tell me you're grown-up. Why didn't you remind him? Yeah. Not when the sun's out. (laughs) That the sun is hot and can burn you? Yeah. Apparently... Is everybody seeing us? Maybe it's just me. I don't know. No, I can see us. Okay, good. On my on my nifty new monitor that I put on your nifty in. new monitor. It's just me. Never mind. Michael's rolling his eyes at me. It's fine. Oh, are you? Did you finally <laughs> enter like two monitor world? I did, but nice, it, huh? I have to do some troubleshooting because if I have like my dock connected to my laptop, it doesn't connect. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it's a simple fix, but I just did it today. Kind of find the cord. I mean, it's been it's been chaotic in my life the past two weeks. Just a bit. I, you can't tell, but like the bottom, like everything from like here down is empty because we had to shift everything upstairs again because my town almost flooded. Well, no, take that back. Part of my town did flood for the second time in two weeks. So don't worry. We were water free. Unfortunately, some of our neighbors were not, but it's been a couple of stressful fucking weeks. And it's supposed to, to rain again later this week coming up. I'm done. It was nice here. Um, Ollie lived his best life outside in the sunshine. <laughs> oh, I bet he did. Best life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike mowed the yard and his little white paws were green. I should have taken a picture. Aw, Link does that. He'll like rub his face and then it, but it doesn't come off. That stuff stains for days. <laughs> You should get him those little light up Crocs so he doesn't have. Yeah, feet. Leah sends me an Instagram the other day that is a dog wearing light up Croc boots. They were awesome. Yeah. I'm okay. sorry. I'm not wrestling the 155 pound dog to put Crocs on his feet. But he's such a good boy. He is he's a good boy. Chew him off. But he would look adorable <laughs> with those on. That's fine, Leah. You, I will buy them, and when you come visit, I can. You can, you can wrestle him. You yep. can put those on Ollie. Okay, as long as he doesn't lick me, I cannot handle that. <laughs> he's not a licker. He's not a licker. He's slobber. He slobbers, Slob- but he's not slobber a licker. I can handle licks. I cannot. He's still a land shark. He like land sharks Sydney, which is well, hilarious. But, you know. He did like tackle her one day. <laughs> he totally did. He's so funny. Um. Okay, so romance term of the week. So... Here's the deal, friends. Originally, this episode was supposed to be taboo versus forbidden, but apparently some people in this conversation don't read enough of those (laughs) to have, like, a great conversation about it. So we're putting that topic on the back burner. Hopefully, if it just might be Leah and I, later this year, we will come back and visit taboo versus forbidden. But until then, some of these episodes, we've had a couple episodes recently that we've been floating, right? Mm-hmm. That we're not sure that we read enough or how to do them, how to do it, and give enough book recs that makes it worth everybody's time. Well, but also do it where we're giving it enough, like, solid talking about. Right. And the nuance. Because a lot of these, a lot of these subgenres that we're talking about, so like Forbidden versus Taboo, that's within the, it really falls mostly within the dark mm-hmm. um, subgenre. But also, we have been struggling with enemies versus rivals versus adversaries because we tend to not read a lot of those. Yeah. And so, because we don't have this huge backlist to say, oh my God, I've read like 75 enemies to lovers book, we don't necessarily know the nuances that happen within those stories to create mm-hmm. them. So, um, so we're working on it, but until that time that we can really give you those books 
wrecks and do those tropes or those subgenres the most um justice justice Give them the most justice that was the word that i was looking for before and yeah. i couldn't think of it we're i'm gonna use them as romance term of the week so over the course of the next couple of weeks some of these topics that we've kind of been dancing around like every week it's like do we want to try to talk about this this week nope let's move it to the next <laughs> week um nope. so we're just going to use them as terms of the week to start kind of putting it out there that way you as the listener if you can think of books that fit into this trope or this subgenre, email us. Email us those book recs so we can start building those TBRs and we can start reading them so that we are better versed into the nuances and do justice to them. Um, so first romance term of the week is taboo. So taboo romance refers to themes, subjects, or relationships that are considered socially unacceptable or morally forbidden. So there's going to be a moral aspect to the taboo mm -hmm. romance. Um, and it's this is based on conventional standards. These may include topics such as forbidden love between family members, relationships with significant age gaps, affairs, unconventional or non-monogamous relationships and other controversial or sensitive subjects such as like taboo you know it could be kind of a he stalked her and held her hostage mm. and then they fell in love because they conventionally her. didn't meet i mean he took her because she was his that's that is true and i read one of those books this week and it's my book of the week so it was so good so good so good um, taboo romance books often explore these forbidden themes in a way that challenges societal norms, expectations, and providing readers with a pro, um, pro, oh my God, words are hard tonight, a proactive and sometimes controversial, provocative, provocative, yeah, I was like, that's still not uh, the right nothing word. is working in my brain right now. Okay. provocative i couldn't even get my youtube for. to work so obviously things are not provocative well there's a space and i don't know why that space is there i don't know but that's why you I have jenny know. and i right Pro awesome. provocative and sometimes controversial reading experiences so next week we will define forbidden but for taboo one of the great ways to think of taboo and i don't know if it's great but i will use the classics as an example the story of Oedipus. That is taboo. East of Eden by John Steinbeck. That is taboo. Um, those books would thousand percent hit into the taboo because there are some moral problems in both those bit. books. A little bit. You know, kill your father to sleep with your mother. You know, stab your brother, sleep with your mother. Everybody sleeps mm -hmm. with their mother. <laughs> No. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. That, no. So what oh, are we... I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> right. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Jenny's like, great. Have you read Jenny's East of like... Eden by John Steinbeck? Have you read it? It's I been have a not. Long time. It's the retelling of Cain and Abel, but John Steinbeck was a dirty bird. He was. He was a dirty yes, bird. I've read uh, quite a few of his, but I have not read. I had an English teacher in high school that was obsessed with him. I think I read that one in high school. I think we read because everything we're not banned Steinbeck. when we were in high school. Right. There was no banned books in, in my town. Um, okay. So showing well, my age there, friends. You are showing your age. So what are we talking about today if it is not taboo? I mean, it could be. Well, actually, I kind of added a little bit of a taboo piece down for our last group of book recs. I don't, I did not follow the doc at all. Just saying. Why do I even make them Leah at this point? You said single dad, small town. So that's what I went with. I did not go. But with I gave little... parameters and rules. I did not look at the doc until about 10 minutes ago. Today, we're diving into the captivating trend <laughs> of single dad romances in small towns. From the unconventional path to the traditional tales, joining us, join us as we explore growing popularity and irresistible charm of these heartwarming stories. Grab a drink, get cozy, and let's delve into the world of single dad's romances together. Here we go. Or just, you know, be willy-nilly like Leah. 
I mean, I can narrow it down like from my list, like my list is, I mean, it's a hot mess of like chicken scratch, but. Okay. So let's just start at the beginning. Why do we think there is a popularity in single dad romances that it seems to be a surging right now? If you start going and looking at the Amazon top 100, I think there are eight, 10 single dads in the top 100 right now. Well, that's just like the Kindle store. Yeah, that's too. just in the Kindle like, that's store. That's not counting like romance. No. Um, and it, you know, we've spawned Elsie Silver had two single dad books in Chestnut Springs. <laughs> She's spawning a whole series of single dads in small towns. Um, so why why do we think romance readers are gravitating towards these single dads right now? I don't know. I think it's just their turn. Cause like, I feel like the single dad and single mom, they kind of cycle because there's there, I think it was maybe a couple years ago, we had a big chunk of single mom books. I feel like if that's just one of those tropes that it just, it's, it's super common in life. Like single parent is common in life. And so it's one of those things where it just, it like resurges every once in a while. But I do not think the way these single dads are written is commonplace. No, I'm not saying that some of them are commonplace. I'm just saying that like the act of being a single parent is commonplace. Yes. Because there there is a new trend where they're very, very unconventional single dads. Yeah, and we'll get to that next. But Jenny... What are your thoughts on single dad romances? And because somebody said in the comments, the swoon factors, the over the ovaries exploding. And we do. <laughs> we get really perfect single dads in romance. And I just did well, a quick like shot with Amanda on moments, a two yeah. perfect single dad. Jenny. Right. And that's yes, yeah, I think that's that's the appeal, right? Like everybody wants the dad that's like all involved and doing everything and um yeah, mom's always doing everything. So, like, like my husband, when he's out with all of our kids, like, sometimes the comments he gets, like, oh, it's your turn to babysit today? He's not babysitting his own fucking kids. Exactly. But, like, we, like, as a society, not, like, we as us three, but, like, as a society, we seem to give more credit to dads for doing the bare minimum. And yes. then, like, so when they go above and beyond, it's, like, Oh. right and you know the book i read dust storm by maggie gates he was the perfect girl dad he was too fucking perfect and i'm sorry i have a great husband and he's a good dad jenny has a great husband and a good dad leah has a great husband and a good dad like we have hot messes sometimes we have good dads in our lives mm -hmm. but they are not perfect all Pretty the God, time no. Good God, like, no. Well, I mean, no like, parent is. Like, parenting is, yeah. <laughs> Gloria told hard. me that parent, like, moms should get more credit because we are in the trenches on the regular. Every day. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, like, an appropriate, like, description of parenting, like, being in the trenches. Yeah. Because you never know, like, what child you're going to get that day if it's like the good child or the exorcist well and one of the things i think is interesting is single dad is kind of like skyrocketing and we're seeing currently we're seeing a lot of these happening over on threads there was a whole conversation this week about how they don't want any pregnancies in their books and pregnancy should be listed as content warnings that you know even if there's pregnancy in the epilogue it should be listed in the content warnings so why is there an acceptability for single dad romances? Because and it's, again, what Jenny was saying, like, it's the male, like, taking on this role of being, like, the provider and the scheduler and all those things. And it's, like, extra. Yeah, because that's what I was going to say, like, because even in custody battles, like, you always hear, like, they're going to give the kids to the mom. Like the mom gets priority. So like when the dad willingly takes on the responsibility of like, oh, parenting man. his children. Yeah. Yeah. He gets like praised. It's like, oh, like he's such a good person for wanting like, to or do that. he like, gave up something to yeah. like, like do this. Dude's a parent. 
Like, well, and we're not hating on the single dad trope. I don't want anyone to think we're <laughs> hating on it. We are kind of being a little negative, but I promise we're going to give you some swoon and some books to check out. But one of the things that I really wanted to draw our attention to is the discrepancies mm-hmm. that we see between single dad romances and single mom romances. Because typically a single dad, as I went through my list, Almost all of these single dad romances have really great built-in support systems. They either have the money or the means to hire a nanny, or they have parents that are helping with the care of the children, or they have a sibling that's helping them the care of their children. Versus oftentimes in single moms, she's working two jobs. She's barely keeping clothes on. She can't get food on the table and she needs rescued. I mean, she is the hot mess express on the regular. Which, I mean, we all know that I live on that and I am not a single mom. So being a single parent does not like create that. But that's the thing. Like, you're right. Because I'm looking at my list again. And I think there's only two, maybe, that struggle. But they don't really struggle at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really interesting to me that there is a very clear discrepancy. And uh, somebody says in the comments that female readers tend to judge female main characters more critically. And while, yes, I agree with that, and we as women tend to be more critical of other women, I also am tired of accepting the bare minimum, especially from my male heroes. I mean, Mm -hmm. Leah and I, how many quick shots have we done where we complain that the hero didn't grovel enough. That was so many. Or he can do better. An orgasm does not equate to forgiveness because (laughs) that's something else that I'm noticing in romances. And I brought this up to the group and Leah was like, thanks, Becky. I did because now like I have to pay attention. Well, because also, because when I read epilogues, I don't pay attention to the chapter heading. Like I just see that it's like a new chapter. So I don't acknowledge that. As much so as you we're would. seeing a lot of trends in books right now that lack third act breakups have maybe a dark moment, but then the last chapter, the grand gesture, the grovel is basically just a set, you know, a long sex scene. And then we go into mm-hmm. the epilogue and things are great. And mm-hmm. I'm like, huh? A good orgasm does not always fix a fight. Friends. Yeah. It, it, I mean, you can't make up for being a jackass because you <laughs> gave me a, an orgasm. Like it doesn't work. You're still a jackass after the still orgasm. Still a jackass after the orgasm. Um, so That should be a sticker. <laughs> so one of the other things that we're seeing in the single dad romances happening right now is unconventional paths to single fatherhood. And mm-hmm. I bring this up because I, again, am Debbie Downer. <laughs> um, I'm just going to accept my part. So we have seen two... Well, now three with Elsie Silver's Wild Love, three books in that have done fairly significantly well that involve um, donor conceived children and single parenthood. One was Penelope Ward's Surrogacy. Amy Dawes has one up right now that's called. Um, Technically speaking, though. Nine-month contract. And then Elsie Silver's book is from Sperm Donation. They're single expecting, though. Like, yes, you're a dad from, like, the get-go, but it's like you're not, you haven't experienced, like, that chaos yet. So it's, like, single wombness. But I'm, because there is controversy, and I know that Jenny feels a little different about this because she had to go through fertility treatments for mm-hmm. her family. Um, But... There is some controversy within the donor conceived world and lack of disclosure that's happening, right? I mean, that's a very like hot button medical mm-hmm. bio ethics type issue. I got some recs for some documentaries. Do you need those? <laughs> but I don't I don't think that this I don't think that this unconventional means to parenthood translates well in romance. Particularly no. if we're seeing people be very loud and vocal about not wanting pregnancy in their books. Well, but I think part of it, though, too, is like how 
it's coming about too. Like the Penelope Ward one, he hires the surrogate because his Her, in-law. His in-laws hired the surrogate. Well, yeah, like he doesn't even right. want the baby basically, but it's like he's. So like that's the like I have issues with that. It's like I don't like the the, the startup premise of like that story. So like I I just I don't know if I would like. I just that. wonder if surrogacy surrogacy is weird. Don't we think it's a little weird? I don't think it's weird. I think that there's a lot of controversy around the whole thing itself, and that also is part of the issue. But it's like if you are a person and you are not saying this is what I want with my spouse or because this is like the choice for me then how how is that gonna work yeah Jenny what are your thoughts on the sur- single dad to surrogacy from surrogacy and they yeah, fall I, in love I mean, with both those books they fall in love with their surrogate but they're Definitely different setups, from my understanding. They are very different. They are setups. very different. Okay, setups. yeah, I I think it depends on the setup. Like, I mean, I w- at least for my romance, I want the dad to want the child. Like, yes. that's a main plot point. Like, he's got to be all in. So that's Amy Dawes's book. He's a grumpy mountain man seeking a surrogate. He basically, and I hate this blur, but I'll read it because it's terrible. Grumpy Mountain Man seeks baby mama. Job is an incubator position only. Surrogate must be um, impervious to grunting in the form of communication and nosy brotherly neighbors. Rustic Mountain Rage housing available upon request. So there's that one. Anyway, I mean, that one, I just don't want surrogacy to become a trend. I also don't want sperm donors, donor conception, you know, I mean, that that is a whole other argument. And we're not going to get into that. Right. Well, but that is the that's how the hero Ford in Elsie Silver's new book is a single dad. Yes. But when you give a donation at a sperm bank, you sign papers saying that you give up basically all rights to that sperm. Well, and the child seeks him out. Like, it's, it, there's a whole premise there. But he's still not the dad. He is it's... literally a sperm donor. He has no rights to anything that is, like, part of her. But, again, that's getting to other things that we are not about. So, no, I just, personally, not in favor of this. I don't love this idea. I I do not either. What do you think? Well, I would have to say, like, I would be interested in seeing a couple that is struggling to have a child. Like a marriage in crisis type. Yeah. Yeah. Like them, like a couple. It doesn't even have to be like a heterosexual couple, like any couple, like Mm -hmm. going through that process. I think that could definitely be romanticized and yeah i will say fun um so samantha christie has one it is book three i think in her sister series it's um white lilies so the heroine is the surrogate and the hero falls in love with her but she but the the wife of the hero at the time is dying but like they want to have a baby so like for that one, the way the story starts, like I, it, it works. Honestly, you will ugly cry because it's Samantha Christie. And I think I ugly cry at every single book she writes, but that one, it, it did not bug me because the way the story played out and it made sense because I don't think at the beginning of the book that anybody, but the hair, like, but the wife knew that she was going to die Yeah, because she had cancer. But there's a lot of there's a lot of angst and grief, and it was really good. I might have to reread that book. Leah like talks herself into rereading. Well, right. and there's a Kaylee Ryan series that is her unexpected expected series, or mm-hmm. that is all like single parent small town. And in book one, the hero finds out he's a dad because the baby mama died in a car crash. And gate like, well, she died from injuries sustained during a car crash. 
She's on her mm-hmm. way to the hospital. She has a car accident. She's pregnant. She's nine months pregnant. She's actually coming into town to find him, to tell him about the baby. Anyway, come to find out, the heroine in the book ends up being the sister of the baby mama. Mm-hmm. And it's really good. It's really emotional. And it's an unconventional way you know, it's an unconventional couple, the way they meet and come together. Um, well, Jasmine Miller, book two in her um, Kings of the Water, I mean, it's not necessarily, it's not small town, but like he finds out he's a single dad because the mom passed away. And then like the nanny that he hires, they end up falling in love. And yeah. it's like he, I mean, secret baby, but like the, the mom passes away. So it's like, you see, you see those every once in a while. Yeah. Um, the other thing we're seeing a huge ton in is single dad and nanny romances. Yeah, we don't need those. It doesn't happen every time. Well, I do like them sometimes, though. I really love a nanny romance. I read a ton of romances uh, that are single dad nannies. But some of them are starting to feel the same. Recently, Jenny and I read, what was the Kristen Proby um wild for you wild for you and at the same time i read ashes for you by katherine cowell and they felt the same like there was nothing like i don't mind a nanny romance like we've read some really great right nanny romances mm-hmm. um but like i mean i love wrong kind of love by lexi ryan which is a small town nanny romance he's mm-hmm. the town doctor he needs a nanny you know he begrudgingly hires the nanny um but and it works like the chemistry is there he doesn't he doesn't even want to like her but in the others it just starts to feel a little rinse and repeat mm mm-hmm. Well, and Janice Whitaker, her first book in her Cowboy Classifieds, Nanny, Cowboy Seeking Nanny, like the wife had passed away, like he needs somebody to take care of the twin, they're twin girls, I think, and like she, this, the nanny comes to like live on the farm and the ranch and help and they fall in love, but it's very natural, it's organic, but it, it makes sense, but it's not, it's not the same as every other book that I've read. Well, and Manhandle by Vanessa Vale, she's not explicitly his nanny, but he's mm-hmm. a firefighter and his dad gets hurt and she's renting the apartment above his garage and he asks her to step in after she's been very clearly vetted to kind of help with the overnights and getting the child to and from school. And it works. It felt fun and fresh, but still had some nanny vibes just, to just it. Just close proximity babysitting. <laughs> Right. right. I think that's what you need in a nanny. Like there has to be more than just the nanny plot line. Like there has to be something else going on. Mm-hmm. Um, like the nanny by Laura Ferguson. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, like she is a cam girl and was like his cam girl. Like he would pay but for he didn't private. Know that he, she was his cam well, girl. He knew before she knew. But he didn't know when she started nannying. Correct. Because it was one of those circumstances where, you know, like a friend of a friend, like, hey, mm-hmm. this person. Yeah. And then he's like, oh. but um, yeah, there has to be more to the plot line than just the nanny. Because I, I think that's, again, where we see like the discrepancy between the single dads and the single moms. Like, when do you see the single mom getting like a live-in babysitter? Well, I can only think There's of like, one, and that's um, Rebecca Weatherspoon has one that's the Manny. Like, he's a male Manny. I think I've, honestly, I've read Rafe, maybe, the book's Rafe. maybe four Manny romances. Because there's, um, there's another one. I can't think of, I cannot think of it off the top of my head. But he's younger and, like, but it's kind of like taboo, like with the way that it, because of who he is, also like oh, there's more to it. Yes, you you know who what I mean. I but do I can't think. I will think of it. The other thing that um, I tend to wonder about nanny romances is, even in a nanny romance, the the hero still has like a really great family system. 
Mm-hmm. Like, right? Like, mom is yeah. still babysitting and the nanny, <laughs> like, that Wild for You by Kristen Provey, she was still working two days a week in the afternoon at the coffee shop and then picking the kids up from school. But when she had to work late or whatever, his mom picked, like, right? Oh. So he basically, like, the nanny aspect was just kind of a manufactured point of the story. Yeah, I think it was a way to get them close together. She, it was also his sister's best friend, so they could have done something with that, but hmm. it also had like a really weak suspense plot line. Yeah, I was like, they needed her to move for the suspense element to work. Yeah. There were a lot of things in it that I was like, huh. Versus like a drift by Swati MH, that's a nanny romance that's a little unconventional. But is incredibly well done. You know, Mm -hmm. it's his, he's a widower. It's his dead wife's little sister. Like, there are so many different pieces in it. And it's just a matter because his mother has some health issues. So, like, it all works and it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing I have a question is, do you think that there is an epidemic of single dads in small town romances? Because... Do see a lot of single parents in small towns. But they're mostly single moms. Well, it's more affordable to live in a small town. That's true. And the dads have their <laughs> shit together. So. The dads have their shit together. Or they own big sprawling ranches. Right. Yeah. The like things. they have some huge business. <laughs> and that was one of the things I was, as I was going through my list, like I went through my small town list and I was like, okay, this is a single parent, but it's a single mom. This is a single mom. This is a single mom. Like I have a, a definite, like, grouping of single dads too but the chunk of my small town single parents are moms the other thing we're seeing a lot in small town single dads is dads with grown children i mean i i don't mind those actually that is one of mine on my list because we have uh manscape by vanessa vale Mm -hmm. that's a small town single dad Scandals of the Father by Zoe Blake. He is a small town single dad who's a billionaire. Reckless Heart by Zoe York. His child is pregnant and he falls in love with the midwife. Mm -hmm. I really liked that book. I really liked that book. So Laramie Briscoe has one in her um, Moonshine Task Force. So he's been a single dad. His son is a senior in college and he like has a one night stand with his son's teacher but doesn't realize it's his teacher um i think technically uh your dad will do by katie roberts is a small town single dad is that small town though i think so i don't know sure Um, it is we'll just say yeah it is now single dad where they are guardians not necessarily biological father Um, We do see a few of those where they're raising nieces or nephews. Mm -hmm. Um, We have Love Me Today by A.L. Jackson. And then um, Kate Canterbury's. In a jam. There you go. That one. I mean, he's the guardian. Mm -hmm. That book was so good. It is really good. Lindsay, read it. Seriously, Lindsay, I can't believe she hasn't read it yet. Okay. Jenny, what? have you read Renna Morgan? Oh, this is oh, also Oh, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, but when mm-hmm. Jenny's read something that Lindsay hasn't, then... <laughs> Lindsay's read Renna Morgan. Well, this is true. We'll just take them both down at the same time. I mean, okay. the judging is hard over here, Jenny. Just going to work on it. The judging is always hard. <laughs> Yeah. This is not a judge free zone. We are not we are not no. planet fitness. We we judge as well. <laughs> so let's talk some book recs. Small town single dads. Let's just start with regular small town single dad romances. These are not necessarily nannies. They are just single dads living in a small town that find some love. Um mm. what do you got, Jenny? Um, so this was when I found this one, I was like, why did I not think of this immediately? It's a really good um, 20 or 32 Rowan Boulevard by Kelsey Kingsley. 
um she's his door dasher well like it has a different name but um right. he has two kids and he actually door dashes a pregnancy test to her and then is like her door dasher throughout her pregnancy and afterwards nice that's fun and different it is and there, that's like one of those where like the small town element is like the town is it own character mm -hmm. they have like facebook posters from the town and the crazy old people and yeah. which i love but i think that's something that i am lacking in my small town single dad romances the town is not really much of a character because like we think about time river by al jackson the town isn't much of a character it's a setting yeah yeah um, so I have that one touch by Carrie Elks. It releases here on April the 26th. He's a girl dad and he is, but okay. So here's the thing. It's not a nanny. Um, and you have to tell us more though. You're being very like, big. <laughs> he is not the nanny or she is not the nanny. He it was really interesting because he's the son of a rock star. So he's from the original Hearts and Creek book, book one. And okay. he um, he's a widower. And he has a great support system with his brother and his parents and his million aunts and uncles and cousins. Right. So he mm -hmm. doesn't need someone to pick up the pieces for his daughter. But he has the opportunity. Music is something he loves, but he gave up a career in music when his ex or when the mother got pregnant and he has an opportunity, the family gives him an opportunity to do like the small venue playing music, like at the local dive bars and stuff like that, because music is part of his heart. And it's a matter of the family recognizes that without music, his soul is missing a piece. And so she's a member of the band and they have a chance to make it big that's all I'm going to tell you because it comes out on the 26th and I really need everybody to read it. It's really great. You guys, it's really great. And it was single dad who has his stuff together and she's not fixing him, but he, he does some really big swoony things, which is what I expect from Carrie Elks. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, that one touch by Carrie Elks, everybody should read that on the 26th. It's amazing. Um, what do you have, Leah? Okay, so Krista Sandor, book one in her Langley Park series. I think it's The Road Home, because after I wrote it down, I wasn't sure if I wrote the right title down. But he's a single dad. Um, it is somewhat like in the heroine, her name is Jenna. She moves back to the small town. Um, she had been gone for a while. But so he, I mean, he has his, his stuff together. He has support, but he is also dealing with the aftermath of why he's a widower and I don't want to like tell anybody that because that is a big spoiler um but it's it's really good it's def if you've read Krista before it is not funny like it is angsty and emotional and like that whole series is excellent like you guys have got to read it if you haven't it's actually how I found her um but it's just it's really well done like it's really emotional and just it's it's a lot but it's good um Lindo, she recommended A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. Mm. It's a small town romance. It's book one in her Ravenswood series. And look at the clinch on that cover, you guys. Ooh, nice. I mean, I like a clinch. Uh, I do too. So uh, any other single dads? Uh, the Lights on Knockbridge Lane by Roan Parrish. I had that one because Gus is just adorable. Gus is adorable. Um, it's male, male, and but Gus is from a previous relationship. Adopted, right? She, I think so, yeah. I think she's adopted. It's, um, but it was just really well done because, again, he's a single dad with his shit together, but he's not perfect because he, like, mm -hmm. loses track of his kid. And how many of us have lost track of our kid? That they're over playing at the neighbor's house. And you didn't know they were at the neighbor's house, but. That's why I low jack my children. Or you could be like Leah and just low jack your children. 
I know where they're at. Um. Okay. Always love her by Melissa Foster. Always That's a her sing- love. Always her love. Yeah. Okay. Levi Steele, he is delightful. But that's a great one that's not a nanny. A mm-hmm. little bit taboo, like our word of the a week. A little bit. Because it's, it's the baby mama's sister. It's the aunt. Well, and there's an age gap there, too. Yeah. But that's one where, like, the heroine was such a big part of the, the daughter's life from the get-go. So it's like this natural progression. But there's there's some hang-ups there. But it is it's really, that's a good one. Um, single dad nanny romances that you can recommend that are in small town. Also, where do all these nannies in the small town come from? Like, no, no. I live in a fairly mid-sized town. It's a micro something or another metropolis or something. Um, Um, you know, who is the nannies in my small town? The high school kids who need jobs for the summer. Yeah. I was like, maybe like we have like, the people that have daycares out of their basement that sounds really bad um, that doesn't but... sound sketch <laughs> at all hello and welcome to the daycare in my basement, my basement. Yeah. is it in a big hole i mean no do they ask do they have to put on lotion do they get the hose <laughs> i just need to know how this all works out um so nanny's or, yeah or nanny's it's like college dad. kids coming home for us too but... yeah that's yeah um, Runaway Love by Melanie Harlow is single dad, small town nanny that's a little different because she's a runaway bride and just really needs a job. But that one, again, what father is going to hire a woman that just shows up on his doorstep in a wedding dress? Because she's got a hot tip from the town diner that yeah. he needed a nanny. I mean, I mean, I guess if you're desperate enough. Right. Um. What do you have, small town nannies? Nannies? I don't think I have any small town nanny. I'm I don't have any small town nannies. Um, I have Heartless by Elsie Silver. Uh, she's kind of more like helping him out, hiding out, and being a nanny. Um, let's see here, Wild for You by Kristen Proby. Um, again, Every I Sweet think... Regret by Lexi Ryan. Because isn't she's she... not the nanny? Isn't she working for him, like helping with care? I don't think so. I thought she was. I don't think she is. I have that on my no. list, but I don't oh, think no. Stella is helping him with, like, because um, he has his shit together. So unconventional single dads in small town. Uh, We're made a moment by Molly McLean. I have that one. That one is so good. If you are looking for small town um, that is unconventional single dad, that's a great one. And he gets back together with his baby mama. When the Time is Right by M. Maybe and Ali Martinez. If you have mm-hmm. not read this book, I am telling you, read this book. This is almost probably more important than Run a Morgan. Yeah. Have you read this one, Jenny? I, yes, I've read this one. Yes. It's so, so good. good. It so is. good. And just like it, with any it, Ali it, Martinez book. Yeah, I was you... like, I love everything. Like, yeah, it's she's going to rip your heart one. out. Oh, they do. Well, and like her backstory is, oh, man. Yeah. Um, Silver Mare by L.B. Dunbar. It's two single parents. She's like a single those. mom and he's a single dad. So I have been read one today by Melanie Sean. Like he's a single dad, but he has a really great relationship with his baby mama. It's called Shooting Star Love. It actually just came out either yesterday or it came out like within the past couple of days. But so he and the baby mama are best friends and they he was discharging from the Navy and they got drunk and slept together and she ended up pregnant. But they have like a really great co-parenting relationship. But okay. I enjoyed that one. I needed a mac and cheese read, and it was it was a good mac and cheese. Um, single dad where secret baby small town. Ooh, Mary B. Moore has one. It's called Ram Remy. A baby like a baby shows up, and he has no idea that he's the dad, and it's, so it's delightful. This isn't a secret baby, but the fact that he's a father is a secret. Okay. Between uh-huh. never, what? 
Oh, okay. Between Never and Forever <laughs> by Britt Benson, he has a child. I don't want to, I can't spoil yeah. that book. There's some spoilers yeah. with that. But the heroine, this is a second chance for them. She has no clue that he has a baby. So, or a child. And the circumstances surrounding the child. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on there. Meritage by Kelly Kay. It's part of her five family winery series. That is a secret baby. Mm -hmm. And this one, he is a hot mess of a single dad. But he's a hot mess of a person. Yeah. He's baby. a douche nozzle, as Kelly likes to call him. Yeah. Well, no, she called, he's a douche canoe, I think. Is he? I thought he's the douche nozzle. I, mean, I don't know. He could be both. He's dumb. He's so he's, dumb. He's so dumb, but it actually is a really good book. I really enjoy their story. Uh, Dirty Secret by Emma Hart. It's book one in her Burke Brothers series. Um, it's it's really a secret baby. She's the single mom. He's the rock star that comes home and finds out that she, he hasn't seen her in a year. And guess what? She has a baby. I was actually having this discussion with my husband about how, like, guys can have secret babies, but, Girls like, cannot. as a, well, I mean, as a woman, unless you're, like, I didn't know I was consciously, pregnant. Yeah, consci or consciously, like, donating your eggs, eggs yeah. to something, yeah. Yeah, that's true. It only works one way, really. Any other single dad romances that we haven't mentioned that we should make sure is are on uh, people's radars? I had a couple teacher like where okay. the where it's the kid's teacher. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know where you were going with that. No, not <laughs> that way. Again, I don't read lots of taboo and forbidden. <laughs> so what did you have? Who were those? Um, teacher of the year. Um, that's teachers in love. The first book by M. A. Wardell, um, and that's a male male romance. Um, and I also had an unexpected chance by Melanie Moreland. It's part of her Instant Spark collection, which again I say this every time, but she's one of the few people that can get me to believe in that instant mm -hmm. love. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, any for you, Leah, that we didn't mention? The Nora Everly book two in her um, Heart Words. No, I can't think of the series name, but it's Heart Words. That's the book name. It's Trevor and Rose. So they kind of connected, but then his ex got like got sick. And so he went back to like help her through her cancer and she ended up passing away. Um, and so then he moved back to the small town that Rose lived in with all the, it's like part of her Barrett family. But it, it's a really good one. Like, there's a lot of emotion, and Rose does not make it easy for him when he comes back because, as she should, make it difficult for him because he did not tell her everything before he left. And so she kind of got smacked in the face by it. Okay. Uh, Truly Madly Deeply by Erica Kelly. Mm, that's it's, a good one. It's um, kind of nanny adjacent I, she helps out with the girls but he has a really good support system with his mom and sister um she's just like another entity of the village yeah um marie johnston has two um make me whole is book one in her oil baron series now liam does not have a great support system because he is the illegitimate ch like baron child and so like he kind of he has his grandma like as the big like the one person that really helps and then his heroine who is his best friend also and then a temporary memory is in her oil night series um it is single dad and she is the kid's dance teacher i don't believe she is the nanny though but i think she does watch the kids if she needs to the most eligible cowboy by stacy kennedy it's a it's a category romance but uh, it's a second chance romance, but she comes to town to do a newspaper article on him because he's been named Texas's most eligible bachelor and they have uh -huh. a fake relationship and it's just, but again, single dad who has a support system. So she is not there to babysit. And I think that's the thing that I get hung up a little bit on nanny romances. Sometimes it's more time like with them apart, especially if it's like a pro sports person 
Mm -hmm. And I think the distance is more than like the togetherness. Yeah, like Heartless with Elsie Silver. That was one that bugged me because they the couple themselves were apart more than they were together. That the kids. The, the kid and nanny were together the most. Does yeah, their relationship kind of pulls the book every, forward. Yeah. But every once in a while, you'll come across one that they get it right because the like relationship really grows over like text messages and phone calls, like in that distance. But it doesn't, but it's rare that you have that. And also, as wrong a temporary memory, she is the nanny, but it, it works in this one. Um, so any other books we need to talk about? Single dads? That you want to make sure. A you're Taste done? of Whiskey, Melissa Foster's new one. He's a single dad. Okay, but tune in to our Sips uh, and Discuss. Sip and Discuss the second Wednesday in May for that book. Read it I'm now and then we'll talk about it soon. You just should read it now because it's very good. Um, okay, so over on our website, we have started to create listicles, list articles um, from us. <laughs> really? dirty sounding word. i know but that's yeah, actually like, what it's was, called it's what it's called it. I believe a listicle it, it sounded real dirty so over on our website you can find listicles from us with other book recs for example if you really like elsie silver's wild love and want more single dad romances that are like that we have a whole article over there. If you liked Corinne Michaels' Forbidden Heart, Nanny, Single Dad, Small Town Romance, I have a list of other books you should check out um, over there on our website. So, If you like a single dad with some suspense mixed in, that's over there too. too. So if, like I said, if you are looking for other book recs, check out our website for our list TBR articles happening over there. Um, we're Let's posting new ones almost every day. Because, like it makes me giggle. Okay. Um, okay. Last week's quote of the week was fictional kinks are not necessarily real life kinks grant. That was from not planned by Harlow James. Um, I do not have a quote of the week this week. Um, I'm taking a break from it because <laughs> I think that we, because we all read so diversely and so many different books at the same time. Um, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard. Nobody's really guessing. Um, so I'm going to come up with something else. We'll come up with a new segment, but it won't be until after our next episode because our next episode is special. Um, and You're right, it is. I it, forgot what it was. It is. Tonight's episode is episode 199. Next week's episode is episode 200. So if you are listening to this uh, the week of April 14th, before April 21st, Buzzing About Romance is gearing up for, to celebrate our 200th episode on April the 21st. As the 200th epi episode approaches, we are asking listeners to nominate their favorite reads discovered through the show. You can nominate more than one. If we helped you find an author or a certain title that you have just come to love, um, please head over to our website and list them. You can do this multiple times. Every no every nomination is a testament to the podcast's impact and our enduring power of romance literature. And Leah and I will have a special episode next week where mm. we are going to talk about the five star reads of Buzzing About Romance. Because um, there's been some great ones that we've discovered. Mm -hmm. And also things like delightful assholes that have come across our ways. Oh, Drake, I love you so much. Um, well, there's a single dad, but he doesn't live in a small town. But he's a delightful asshole. He is a delightful asshole. Um, okay, so guess what time it is, guys? It's that time. It's that time. The book. Book of, of the, the week. week. It's book, book of the week, week time. Oh. Um, Jenny, what's your book of the week? Um, so I, I read a whole series this week. Um, Look at right? that. Go. Right? Not do, yeah, not doing my homework. Uh, How's your homework going, Jenny? <laughs> That's so great. Um, the, the Lost Boys series by Kelly Fox. Uh, I definitely blame Heather 100% for this. So Perfect. Um, they're all male, male. Um, there's three books in a novella right now. And the next one comes out this week. 
Um, and the Lost Boys are a group of like high school kids that um, had a mentor that kind of like brought them in. And then this is like 10, 15 years in the future as they're adults trying to find their way in the world. Excellent. Okay. So just read the whole series. Yes. I, um, the Crush is probably my favorite. That's the second one. But um, they're, they're best read in order. Um, okay, Leah, what's your book of the week? My book of the week is Kaylee Ryan's Is This Love? It's Everlasting Inc. book two. Um, it is a fake marriage. It's very low angst, very easy, but actually, but there was like a third act. There wasn't a third act breakup, but there was like a third act event that was very emotional and like it hit, it hit hard in like the, the right ways, but it just, it was very, it was like I said, I, after the couple of weeks I've had some mac and cheese reefs are like my go-to right now, but like the relationship. So it's Monroe and legend. Monroe is the best friend of the heroine from book one and like she's always kind of flirted with all the guys and she volunteers herself to get to marry legend because his mother's parents have passed away and they're gonna give him lots of money but they kicked like her his mom out like when she married her father his father and so like the, the premise of like the story was interesting like the way that they did it but but Monroe's like, I'll take one for the team and we'll do this. And it just, it's a natural progression. Like, but I, I enjoyed it. It was good. Okay. Okay. What was your book of the week? Um, so I am, I am in my happy place. I went with a mafia read gorgeous villain by charity <laughs> Farrell. Um, really good. He stalks her. They have a secret relationship. It technically is a slow burn um, yeah. because they're not together for most of the book, mm -hmm. um, but they're sneaking around and not necessarily having the sex, but doing the sex like things. Um, <laughs> and this is like enemies to lovers. Like if you like enemies to lovers, this is enemies to lovers like crack. Yeah. Because it's really good though. There's hate. a lot of like, well, there's a lot of hate between the families also. So it's like, it's it doesn't go over well with Papa Bear. Yeah, yeah. And I really liked his book, Gorgeous Monster. And there for a while, I was really mad at him, and I didn't know if he was going to come around. Yeah. Well, and so Becky actually texted me. She's like, when does this book take place? But it, so it starts before Gorgeous Monster starts. And so it, and then it ends after both Gorgeous yeah. Monster and Gorgeous Prince. So it oh, like, the timeline goes, but I will say Charity Farrell, the timeline, it works. It matches. Like It was perfect. Like, there were no it hiccups. It really yeah. well. Like you didn't like read it and be like, I don't remember this happening. And for those that are worried about consent, there's a hundred percent consent. Oh yeah, happening in this book, like it is yeah. consensual. They're both into it. Um, yeah, yeah, like I just, it was really good. There's a lot of violence though. Like, I will say, Charity Farrell, like this is like her sweet spot, like the dark. Yeah, and I'm excited. There's she's another just, book coming because is. it is teased so hard at the end of this book that I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be amazing. So I mentioned our 200th episode. We hope you'll tune in next week. Um, okay, Patreon update. I don't know. <laughs> um, swag packs have hit the streets. And let me tell you, this month's, this month's pack, sponsored by the incredible duo Helena Hunting and Kaylee Ryan, are absolute game changers. Romance lovers, prepare yourself for a serious treat. Um, each swag pack comes jam-packed with goodies that will make your heart flutter, from romance-themed stickers to mood-boosting cards, uh, hand-picked to ignite your passion for love stories. And guess what? We're shipping worldwide, so nobody misses out on the love. Um, 
But hold on, because the perks don't stop there. Join our Patreon community and you'll unlock a treasure trove of benefits, including exclusive episodes and access to our captivating, buzzing book club. It's a romance adventure that never stops. So remember, starting the week of April the 28th, our quick shots go to Patreon. They will only be on Patreon. Um, and May 1st, we start with our book club styled episodes. Um, so if you enjoy the quick shots, you're going to want to join our Patreon so you can get them over there. Uh, keep your fingers on the pulse of all happenings by subscribing to our newsletter for the latest episode and check out our events calendar at bookcaseandcoffee.com slash events. From happy hours to IG lives and book clubs, there's never a dull moment in our world. There really isn't. Like I updated the, uh, events this week and... We have a bunch of stuff still happening. Plus, we're traveling in May. The three of us are headed to Columbus for the signing down there. Um, mm -hmm. So lots of stuff happening. Lots of stuff. Um, so what are you waiting for? Dive headfirst into the enchanting romance journey with us and become a cherished member of the Patreon family today. Um I'll be honest, I was stuck in all things uh, gorgeous villain today, and I did not write you a flowery outro. I, mean, I will forgive you because of where you were at. Yeah, I really needed to read that book. Um, I, I told you, you needed to read that book. Well, and I've been in a terrible book slump for the last six weeks, probably since the first of the year, to be honest, if I'm being very honest. And that book just grabbed hold, didn't let go today. I'm in my dark again. Like, I mean, like I, I needed the fluff these past couple of days, but like the dark or the extremely dirty. Right. And like, we got a Sarah, new Sarah Bale coming out. Like, oh my God, I know that cover is top yeah. notch. Yeah. Um, so until next time, stay fabulous, stay flirty and keep buzzing about romance. Until next time, everybody. Happy reading, everybody.